What's up, everybody? How are you all doing today? My name is Jordan McCracken Foster, and I'm a teaching artist here at Art Prop, and I'm here today with Deep D. Menon. And what we're going to be working on today is Procreate Master Copies. So if you want to learn how to turn your artistic skill into um, artistic weakness into your strength, check out our website at artprof.org, where we have lots of free tutorials, critiques, and all that good stuff. So uh, you want to go into talking about what we're going to be doing a little bit today? Sure. So like you said, we are doing master copies of two um, artists' work. I am doing a piece from Nathan Fawkes, and you're doing... Um, remind me of the name of your artist? Uh, name is Emily Tetris, but this was for The Legend of Korra. Okay, cool. And we would love for you guys to actually draw along with us. Um, so if you do, we'll be in the Discord afterwards, so you should share your work with us. But we are basically master copies. Jordan, do you want to explain a little bit about what a master copy is and maybe why it's useful to do? Yeah, so master copies are basically just studying the basic fundamentals of any artwork that comes from you know a master so it could be for purposes of composition understanding color um you know lighting whatever it is that you're trying to study and you just look at it and recreate it on your own as closely as possible um and so yeah we're going to be doing these two highly developed paintings that we probably will not finish in an hour but um yeah we'll see we'll see what we do um, and yeah. So I know you have a lot of experience doing these and I have like basically none as per usual. Um, and I was wondering, can you, I, I'm gonna need my handheld through this basically. So can you walk me through how I get started like what I'm doing? Sure, sure. Um, okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change my background color to like a, a grayish just because uh, it's easier to see colors that way instead of when it's on a pure white background um and then when i'm how, working wait, sorry. how did you change your background color so easily i am so sorry uh it's so go to your layers panel okay and then oh. take the background there and yeah you could just change the color like that okay cool 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 i'm following okay right. um and so the next thing this might be considered cheating a little bit but because uh we're primarily just focusing on color I am literally going to duplicate this painting and just move it down a little bit just for the purposes of keeping the same aspect ratio and framing and everything. Um, and uh, then I'm going to, again, I'm just gonna trace this out really quickly, like using like five lines <laughs> because we only have, you know, an hour and 20 minutes and no one needs to see me like measuring all that stuff. So I'm literally just gonna, Trace this out. Um, and again, this could be considered cheating, but uh, I feel like the point of this is something completely different than drawing. You know, if this were a drawing stream for a master copy, then sure, I think that would be uh, a very valid point, but we're not worrying about that right now. Okay, cool. Well, on the, on the topic of cheating, while we're both I guess maybe cheating according to who. Um, can you talk about like, I mean, like I feel like when I think about a master copy, I totally get learning from it. Um, but also like, what would you say to people? Like, I guess where do master copies live after you make them? What do you say to people who are like, what's the difference between this and fan art? Um, Cause it seems like master copies are a really useful thing, but then like copying another person's work or like just, creating something exactly like someone else's work can be seen as kind of like unoriginal. So how do you think of that? Or what would you say? Um, I think, first off, this is purely for the purpose of learning. Um, this is not something to try and attempt to pass off as your own work. I would never do that. Um, and I don't recommend anyone else doing it. If you were to post it online, I think you should be very clear that it's someone else's work and show the original work and you know say, hey, I did this in an hour whatever the case is, um, giving credit to the artist is super important. Uh, fan art, uh, I think, lives in a different world altogether because you're simply just drawing someone else's character. Um, and if you really think about it, I guess some people do that for a living. Like when you're animating a character, it's not 
usually the character you create, sometimes it's the character someone else created. That, if you want to consider that fan art, then <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, is that right? But yeah. Art Prof is asking, Jordan, are the lines you're drawing on a separate layer on top of the painting? Yes, they are. So what I've done is I've just uh, put uh, the lines on a separate layer. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually completely cover up this painting. Um, to, well, maybe with a, hold on, with another color. Just because now I've come to a point where it's just, um, sorry, talking and doing this at the same time. Um, no, I feel you. <laughs> it's become challenging. Um, so the reason uh, I do this is so I can purely focus on just the basic composition and now I'm I'm less I'm not tempted to you know have this painting showing underneath I, like now I really have to learn um and the one I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something called creating a clipping mask um you know what a clipping mask is deep right uh yes I do okay cool so I'll explain for everyone who does not know uh clipping masks are basically um they give you the ability to basically crop something without losing all of it. So for example, I have um, I have some of these lines that are going outside of the frame of this piece, but I don't wanna to have to go in every single layer all the time and delete that. So what you can do is you can tap on this layer and it'll say clipping mask and it'll you'll see this little arrow icon underneath or right next to the layer and it'll start to put that inside this little frame. So that's what I'm going to do for everything here. Um, wow. Okay. Does that make sense? I don't want to yes. go too fast. Uh, that makes sense. I'm still in my tracing the composition phase, but I'm, I'm following. I'm following. Okay. Yeah. And the tracing doesn't have to be super accurate. It's more just for the blocks of shape. Um, right. Just yeah. That's all. Very cool. Um, How and, did you? Okay. Sorry. The yellow square that you have for your canvas. Mm -hmm. How did you just, how did you do that? Oh, so okay. Quickly. So um, I for you, I would not do this right yet until you're done with the tracing portion. Mm -hmm. but, um, but what I did is I literally took that duplicate painting that I made and just filled it with another color. Um, like uh... in the painting itself, it's just like, nope, I'm painting all over it just like you were to paint over a wall. Um, and that's just like dragging the color into it? Yeah, you can drag the color into it, or um, probably the fastest way is tap on it on the layer and hit fill layer, and it'll fill it automatically with, with the color that you have selected. Um, probably yellow is not the best color for this, actually. I'll probably change it to something more like this. Wait, sorry, I you cut out for a second. How did you pick the color, yellow? Or like, how, how would you recommend picking a color? Oh, um, the yellow color was completely random. Uh, okay. Uh, but I would use the color that's most prominent in the shadows personally. So for you, I'll probably pick like a cool gray. Okay. Um, and because that way you can have a, um, the light really pop out. Um, Blue Wolf Sp Spirit says flood, fill the layer with the painting, right? Yes. Um, yes. So just that painting that I duplicated, all I did was just flood that layer and, or fill it with a brand new color and that's it. Um, hopefully I'm making sense, guys. This is just what I do uh, to make things go faster. <laughs> if you guys wanna just get right to painting, that's totally fine, I understand. Okay, wait, but now I did do that and it's the whole canvas. Uh, hit your layers. Let me see your layer. Uh, create a clipping mask. Um, so tap on that layer uh -huh. and then hit clipping mask. Oh, I think, okay, wait, hold on. Let me figure this out. I think, I think I understand. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting excited. <laughs> sure, take your time. Take your time. Um, Maria says, fan art is something a lot of people look down on like it's, like it's lesser. I don't get it because I had seen some awesome art and I think they were great because the artists loved the original. But maybe, oh, you got it? Sweet. Uh, uh, but maybe I don't get it because I don't believe there's such a thing as 100% original in the world um yeah you know i i think it's a shame that fan art has such a you know, negative name on it um i know i actually know of a couple people in the industry who got jobs literally for doing fan art of their favorite shows 
Like they were at a Comic Con, they showed the portfolio and they said, "You're dope and you're hired. Come with me." Um, like on the spot. Um, do you have any experiences with with someone discouraging you from doing fan art, Deep D? I, I personally, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? I was Thank like, you. Oh, the Maria was uh, talking about uh, fan art and how it's often seen as lesser. And I was just wondering what your thoughts were on, on that. Yeah, I think that I kind of like had that same relationship with it where I thought of it as like unoriginal and uncool to do. But I think you're right. I mean, like so many people in the industry have jobs that are a hundred percent based on like creating the same character over and over again and like sticking to an aesthetic with the show. Um, so yeah, I don't know. As long as like, I think regardless of even if you are making fan art, you are kind of remixing it in your own way. I think it's like anyone who makes fan art, I think it would behoove them to also have their own art practice um, as an artist, but I don't know. I can't hate on it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, Jordan, what next? All right, so now I'm just gonna create my palette and this part is probably gonna take a couple minutes, but basically what I'm doing is trying to get the most accurate colors as possible. And this is the equivalent to mixing colors uh, on, you know, on a palette, like on in traditional. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at like, let's say this wall and I'm looking at this cool gray purple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little color picker and I'm just gonna try and get as close as I can to what I think this color is. Um, okay. And it's gonna be a little tedious, but it's gonna help a lot in the long run. And so then what I do, let's say I pick this grayish purple, I'll put a mark here and I'll see how close I am to it. And I'll zoom out. And I judge based on this, like, do I need to go lighter? Do I need to go darker? Is it a different hue? Um, was it more saturated? And I just kind of play around with that. And so maybe I need to make it a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit more blue. And once I feel like I've gotten close to that color, like this one is actually really close, this what I've gotten here. So yeah. now, now I can leave this alone and I can move to another area of the painting. So let's say the sky, what color is the sky? Um, it's gonna be a baby blue type of color. I'll put a mark there. And again, I'll just make the same judgments over and over again in about five, or six key areas of color. Mm -hmm. um, Jordan, if you color pick from the painting you are copying, is that cheating? Um, again, this is a master copy, and the goal is to try and get into the mind of the artist themselves. And so when I was in school, uh, even if it was traditional, I would try and find ways to mix the exact same color that maybe Edgar Payne was using. So instead of cadmium red, maybe he was using an alizarin crimson. And I'd have to figure that out. And doing this process um, uh, really helps me recognize what colors I'm actually seeing. Um, and uh, I guess that kind of answers Hannah's question. Is there a reason you don't just select the color from the painting? Um, it just helps you learn as an artist. Um, because, you know, at least for me, I don't want to get stuck in the habit of constantly relying on someone else, I'm trying to get in the mind of this artist. And if I can learn how they make their decisions when it comes to time to doing something outside of master copy, then I can really shine and I can use the principles that I've learned with this. I hope that made sense. Maybe you already said this and I was just distracted, but how did you, um, how many colors for your palette do you pick? Uh, not that many, like four or five, just whatever basic colors. So for you in your situation, I would say you could probably be fine with just like four colors, like that okay. bright orange, the browns, the blues, and maybe the moon color. Um, for me, I'm probably going to do these two different purples for the wall because one's slightly lighter and more orange. There's the sky color. There's the grass that's slightly greener, one that's slightly more yellow and this foreground, and that's really it. And after that, it's just a matter of kind of mixing and playing with it. And um, this is how I start all my master copies. And it helps me out a lot personally. Uh, it's a little tedious, but <laughs> I find that it really is helpful. Trent is saying, also the color in the painting is the result of mixing other colors. So picking the color defeats the purpose of learning how colors mix. I think that's a really great point. You know. 
Um, it forces you to kind of understand how warm and cool colors work together. Um, sometimes on the palette also, things will look a certain way and then you'll put it on your canvas and in relationship to the other colors, it'll look completely different, which is something that I'm struggling with right now. Um, so yeah, I think Trent makes a really good point there. Yeah, there, there's so many ways you can, you can do this. And, uh, and by the way, guys, um, there's more than one way to create a palette. Uh, the method I'm using, I'm just putting it on a new layer and then I'll show you how I treat this in a second. But another thing you can do, once you find a color you like, if you go to your color panel up at the top right, uh, there's this little icon down here that says palettes, and you can literally create a palette from scratch. So if you hit this plus button at the top, you say create new palette, and once you tap in the square, whatever color you have selected will automatically pop up. And uh, if you want to delete it, you can just hold it for a second and then delete swatch. But that's one way that you can uh, save these colors if you're going to use them over and over again. Let's see. You are so smart, Jordan. <laughs> well, it took me a long time to figure these out, but you're doing just fine. Like we, we ran through some of these things really quickly and you you were literally, you're on the same stage I am. You're doing just fine, you're, you're great. It's cause I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shaim says, don't know why, but I'm gluten Oh, I'm a glutton. I'm sorry. I'm a glutton. For <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm a glutton. I almost did it again. I'm a, gl a glutton for desaturated colors. Something about cloudy and foggy days make me satisfied. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's a lot of really amazing paintings with desaturated colors. And uh, to be honest with you, a lot of paintings that feel saturated, just have kind of like a focal point that is more saturated and the rest is kind of desaturated. So, you know, studying things like that for these master copies is actually really good to recognize. Okay, let's do, let's do these clouds here. And by the way, guys, um, I think it's also good to time yourself when you're doing these. Uh, you know, give yourself 45 minutes or an hour or something because the goal is not to recreate it perfectly necessarily. It's just about how close can I really get in a short amount of time to, can I understand what the artist is doing? Um, unless you want to take it far, but it's not like you can pass off as your own work. <laughs> so it's That's just a very true. Yeah. Yeah, actually, green looks pretty close. Sarah is saying, oh my God, art prof stream, time to stop procrastinating and work on my digital art project. <sighs> I get that. I get it. Do it. But we are rooting for you. Join us on this adventure. You're going to be just fine. Yes. And if not, you will be in the boat that I'm in. in. Oh, you're fine. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, I don't know why these streams get me so stressed. Okay, Blue is saying, so if someone does a master copy, that's fine, but fan art is not. I think that's a double standard. Both are copying someone else's work. Yeah, I mean, I think we touched upon both of these where I think that like um, really both are fine. It's just kind of like who you are as an artist. I think one is ma the master copy is more for learning purposes rather than like portfolio pieces to like show and fan art can sometimes exist in like a portfolio or, um, yeah, would you agree with what I just said, Jordan? Yeah, 100%. I mean, th I think that's where everything just kind of comes to a head, you know, for learning purposes, you know, certain things are seen as okay. Like, uh, like for example, we did tracing just now. Uh, ordinarily, if you're learning, I would, you know, if you're working on drawing, I would not say to trace. But for mm -hmm. this, because we're just trying to get the colors right, um, do a painting, that's a little different, but uh, passing off something as yours when it's really not in terms of fan art, a lot of it just has to do with the opinion of the person you're showing it to. Like, you know, what if the person you're showing it to doesn't like anime, but you like doing anime fan art, then, you know, just is what it is. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, I just want to show you guys something that I'm going to do real quick. So I basically got my palette. I picked out like five or six key elements. Um, yeah, I'll turn the layer off 
So these, these are the colors that I've chosen. So it's one, two, three, it's like seven colors maybe. Um, and that could even be considered a little excessive. But what I'm doing is I'm just gonna duplicate that and I'm going to place it right over the pang that I'm gonna be doing. And I'm gonna put that underneath my line drawing, that layer. And now I basically have everything set up. And so now what I'm gonna spend my time doing is just getting all these elements, the sky, the wall, the grass and all that stuff. And um, typically I like to uh, separate it in terms of foreground, middle ground and background. Uh, that's just how I work, but some people have different methods. So yeah, so that's how I'm gonna do this. Maybe I already asked you this, Jordan, but how often do you make these um, master copies? Um, lately, I haven't done very many, but in the summer, I spend a lot of time doing master copies. Like I tried to do at least one a day and uh, just, you know, 30 minutes to an hour um, and just, just to get the practice up. But since I've been working and stuff, fortunately, the time has kind of gone away. Feel you on that one. Uh, Calm Cuke says, "How necessary is the Apple Pencil, and is Procreate the only program you can use?" Uh, do you want me to answer that, or do you want to take that? One? I think you should answer that. You're the Procreate whiz. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the for the iPad, the Apple Pencil is the it, it's specifically built for the iPad, so it's the best stylus that they have. I also think they just came out with something that said that some third party styluses will not work with the newest update of iOS. Um, and uh, Procreate is not the only app you can use, but it is probably the most popular drawing and painting app out there. Um, most, prof maybe not most, but a lot of professional artists use it. And it's really cheap, you know, it's pretty easy to use for the most part. And um, yeah, I really like it personally. But I don't know. I might be driving everyone else on Art Prof mad <laughs> by doing this. No way. It's such a good learning experience. Uh, Rachel is asking, if you were to use a photo reference to learn how to paint form, is it okay to paint over the picture to learn about it? Or is it better to have the picture on the side? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I would say that I think it's better to have it on the side because I think that if you're trying to create form, you don't want to be using the form as like a um, as like a wireframe that you're working on top of. You want to kind of like understand the shapes and the curves and be able to process that and then translate onto your own sheet of paper. But what would you say to that, Jordan? Yeah, I agree. I, I personally have found that the method that we're using by just having things side by side is probably the best method to use. Um, it helps with, you know, uh, getting rid of confusion. Uh, it helps you to actually see the differences uh, in what you're doing versus what the actual reference has. And if you're getting a critique from somebody, it's really helpful when they can see it side by side and say, oh, you are clearly missing this portion, you know, in yours. You know, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, okay. Now is the fun part. Now I'm going to spend some time working on I'm close to being there. I think one more color and that should do it for me. Yeah. Get it, Yay. baby. Yay. Thank you for your support. Oh, but of course. <laughs> I love doing this. Uh, Maya Hika is saying, I think beginners and other people underestimate how useful doing a master copy could be, whether from old masters or the masters we have now. I agree. You know, it's funny because I was thinking, I was like, have I done a master copy? And I actually did one once when I was in college in a video class, um, which is kind of funny because like, how do you do a master copy for a video class? But it was really helpful because it really teaches you how to think as the artist, like you said, but also think about like the equipment that they were using. Um, it's just interesting to think that it's like applicable past just a 2D still image, you know? Um, I found it really helpful to be like, oh wow, like. You know, I learned so much on like what equipment this artist used and how they would have directed their actors and why they would have cast maybe a certain like type of person. Um, yeah. Or like, would I have done that differently? 
that's so interesting. I've never actually thought about master copies in terms of film before. Like that never crossed my mind. I didn't even know people did that. Yeah, it's in it's interesting, right? So so is it just so you mentioned something about casting? Like what what do you do for that exactly? Well, you have like the one that I did actually was. Um, like an abstract film where they he was like putting sand in a speaker and then speaking into the speaker and then the sand would like jump up and down. So mm -hmm. I didn't do anything with casting, but I think that certain people um, did work with like actors and a lot of times they just use themselves because that's what was accessible. But sometimes people, you know, tried to find actors that looked or talked like or had the same like body type or, you know, like they picked and choose what um, they had access to and what would make the most sense. But I was like, wow, these are like things that you don't really think of sometimes when you're watching a film and then you you have to do this master copy and you're suddenly thrown into being like, why would this actor be chosen for this? Like, I that's not my, you know, preference, but why would this director? And, and it like, it doesn't mean that you agree with those choices, but it does kind of put you in that director seat. Mm so cool I really never thought about that it's interesting yeah it's, it's interesting I'm w315 I think I'm gonna do one more swatch which I think I've gotten oh there you go yeah you're doing just fine and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna paint oh shoot I didn't swatch some of them uh w315 bird says I'm only here to hear Jordan tell me I'm doing just fine calming into a stressful day <laughs> You're doing just fine, guys. All of you doing the art alongs, I can't wait to see what <laughs> you guys produce. That's gonna Honestly, be cool. same. That's why I'm here, too. All right. So, so as Deep D is also doing just fine and just getting the rest of her colors, um, I'll just kind of update you on where I'm at. Um, basically, what I did is I filled in the basic um, color blocks of everything. And even though it's not perfect, you can't make out every detail, you the colors are pretty much accurate. And so now I can really just go in and refine everything, add some gradient to the shadows, add some texture here and there, and it's gonna make the whole process just go by much faster. Um, Question, that might be stupid. How do I duplicate a layer? Oh, um, you swipe uh, to the left, and then it should say, uh, uh -huh. and delete. Got it, thank yeah. you. Sure. Um, Shaim says, I've never done master copies. Sounds interesting, but intimidating at the same time. Um, I don't think they are meant to be intimidating. They're meant to just get you learning. Uh, and I think what I think it's the easiest way to expose what um, what holes in your skill set you have. You know, like let's say you're trying to do a master copy of something that's really colorful, but you don't understand color theory very well. Well, that's going to expose that. And then you can say, well, I clearly need to work on color some more. So you go do your, you know, studying up on that. And then you try it again. And then you're closer. And you can apply that to just about anything. So I think it's meant to be really helpful. Okay. I got my palette. Yeah. All right. So now um, what I did, I separated by foreground, middle ground, background in terms of the layers. Like, okay, I'll just show you. Background layers, my sky, middle ground is the wall and uh, grass, foreground is just some of the foreground uh, bushes and grass and stuff. And then I just filled in all of those spots just like that to match the paint as closely as possible. Okay. Amazing. Right. Now I'm just going to go in and just have some fun. Get to blend. Yay, it's fun time. Yeah, get to blend stuff now. Oh, I was going to ask you how, ooh, I just, <laughs> I just typed on my computer in an attempt to, okay, anyways, I was going to ask you, um, how do you choose your brush? Uh, I, so I personally found a way that works for me and I like using hard edge brushes at the beginning just to get the color blocks in and then mm -hmm. I'll soften them up. So I actually had a brush kit from uh, Patrick O'Keefe, who was the art director on Spider-Verse. Uh, I took one of his courses online. He gave his brush pack. He sold his brush pack as a part of it. So I use that because Spider-Verse is awesome. And if he's the art director, then clearly there's something I can learn from him. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's, honestly, it's up to personal preference. 
I think. Um, so do you know if you work better with hard edges or soft edges, DP? No, but uh, you said hard edge, so perhaps I would pick a hard edge. I don't know. I'm like, I'm, tr I, I'm so new to Procreate. I'm like, maybe I'll just try a brush and just see what happens with that. Because as, as I layer, I can, I'm sure I can get the texture better, but like, why not just try something? Um, we have a question from Maria that says, personal opinion, do you guys prefer to make faster master copies more than one or make one super in detail? Um, I don't do a lot of master copies, but my initial thought is that I would, I think I would like to do a, like maybe five like quick ones and then spend a lot of time on one after doing those five. Um, what do you think, Jordan? Yeah, personally, I like doing more quick studies because um, I feel like when it comes, when you're spending like 30 hours on a master copy at that point, it's really just about matching the technique. So I guess it, it depends on the purpose you're going in for. So if you're just trying to match the colors, kind of like we are, you know, I've only, we've only been on the stream for 30 minutes and maybe 15 of those, or maybe even less, I've actually spent painting and working on this. But, um, you know, I've, I understand a lot about how this artist is working already. Um, so I think it's up to personal preference, really. Um, again, I know that's a common answer I say, but, uh, it's really true because some things don't work for everybody, but not everybody learns the same exact way. So, yeah. I like that answer. Good, because I was like, I hope that made sense. We have a question from Vaporistique. Um, can any piece be a master copy, Jordan? Uh, I would assume so. I mean, I, I would say someone who's, you'll probably want to study someone who is better than you. Um, like if you're, you know, studying like your five-year-old little brother's first drawing or something like that, maybe that's not the best use of your time. <laughs> but if you're looking at Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo or, you know, a background painting from animation, like, like our, mine's from Legend of Korra and, and Deep Tea's doing Nathan Fouts. Uh, I'm not sure what movie that's from, but he worked on Prince of Egypt and El Dorado and Sinbad and stuff. So, you know, yeah. Although I will say that like you could do a master copy of your five-year-old drawing if like you wanted to see if you can like get into that mindset, maybe that could be an interesting. That's true. That is true. I actually didn't think about that. <laughs> oh, Hannah says, what brushes do you typically use in Procreate? I still can't find ones that work well for me. Um, so first off, um, no brush is going to make or break a painting. Uh, it's really, so, sometimes I fight with certain brushes, you know, there, there'll be like, for example, my uh, one of my drawing teachers who I've learned a ton of stuff from, like probably most of what I know is from him. He draws with a brush that I can't stand. And so just because it works for him doesn't mean it's gonna work for me even though I've learned a lot. Um, so that's where it comes to playing around with stuff uh, checking out the effects, you know, maybe there's a certain artist that you do like, and you can use a brush and just see, you know, use a brush that they use and just see. If it doesn't work, switch to another one. Um, another thing that some people might not know is Procreate just created the ability to upload Photoshop brushes into Procreate. So if you have a specific Photoshop brush you want to use, you can import it here. And uh, there's lots of tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. But uh, yeah, there's always that option too. Yours is looking so good already. Yours is gonna look like this in about five minutes. Just watch. <laughs> I am having a hard time believing that, but okay. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just put in the blocks of color. And all I did was just all I'm doing is kind of blending stuff right now. I really haven't spent that much effort on getting it to look perfect. You got this. All right. Lowering my blood pressure. Deep there you breath. go. There you go. <laughs> we have a comment from Ezra saying, hey, y'all, I just came here to support. I can't imagine how hard you guys work to give us this content. That's so sweet. Thank you so much, Ezra. That really means a lot. Yeah. And that is also helping lower my blood pressure as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, you see it's working. Keep keep saying stuff like that. We got we to help DT out over here. <laughs> 
but thank you. Esther. That was really kind of you. And uh, as long as you like the content, then that's all that matters to us. Exactly. Then I will keep doing these appropriate streams. Right. And I'll be here to calm you down for some of them because we're not on poker streams together all the time. But yes. I'll, as much as I can. <laughs> They're very funny when we don't have Jordan on because we're just like, help. Um, Color Dragon is saying, have you two used other software programs of creating a digital piece? I've used Photoshop, mm -hmm. but I definitely don't work like this in a very like painterly way. Uh, Jordan, what about you? Yeah, I use Photoshop um, mostly. I also have Clip Studio Paint, but I haven't experimented with it that much. Um, and then I also, tr I also bought several different um, apps for Procreate, I'm sorry, for the iPad just to see what the difference is. And I still like this one more. I won't mention those other apps because uh, I don't wanna diss anybody, but uh, mm -hmm. you never know who's watching. But uh, I found this one to be my favorite. I think it like really is like to each their own. Um, you know, some, like you said, with the brush and your teacher, everyone kind of works differently, so. Yeah, like actually, I just real I just remember this. My teacher actually hates using Procreate. Like he will, <laughs> he hates using the iPad. I'm like, what the heck, man? It's so convenient. <laughs> but, That's hilarious. Yeah, for what whatever reason, he's just like, nope. You guys should teach a class together. That'd be really funny to just watch you two fight through it all. Oh my gosh, that would that would be really funny. But I feel like <laughs> I don't have stuff to say because again, a lot of stuff I learn directly from him. So. <laughs> so it'd, <be laughs> it'd sound like a broken record at times. But, uh, yeah. A line is saying, um, sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, do you folks set up a timer to work on these studies? I find that if I don't spend, if I don't spend, oh my gosh, if I'm sorry. I find that if I don't, I spend too long overworking tiny details instead of focusing on the whole thing and getting the gist of it across. I have not set up a timer, but like, I think because our stream is a certain amount of time that kind of helps us. Um, I would, I always recommend when you're doing, I mean, I, I don't do a ton of master copies, but in general, I recommend working with time constraints when you're kind of like just doing quick exercises, at least for me, I find that, that those really help um, because it pushes you to not overwork things like you said. How about you, Jordan? Yeah, I recommend setting a certain amount of time. Like when I was first doing master copies over the summer, like when I was really getting into it, I started at 30 minutes, just 30 minutes flat, and that's it. And um, whether they came out terribly, which most of them did, mm -hmm. over the course of me working, like after like five or 10, I started really getting the hang of it. And I was, it got to a point where I was like, man, this isn't really that challenging for me anymore. Like I need to, I need to up my time or, you know, and see how much more detail I can get. And so I would increase it to 45 minutes and see what I could do. And then I did one hour and then two hours. And in two hours, I remember I posted one of my master copies and someone said they couldn't tell the difference between mine and the, and the original version after just two hours. So wow, um, that was really exciting because painting has been, um, has always been my Achilles heel with art uh, for whatever reason. And now I'm starting to finally conquer it, which I'm super happy about. You have conquered, dude. <laughs> I appreciate that. And just like you are going to do the same thing with Procreate in a matter of time. We have a question from Beparisi. I think we answered this one actually already. Can any piece be a master copy? And I think, yeah, we, we talked about how, um, yeah, we think that like as long as you're learning and uh, it's you see something that you'd like to achieve and you maybe don't know how exactly you, or you'd like to get there. Um, I think that can be, that can definitely be a master copy. Call them cubes. Okay. Oh. oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, if you put down a color with, sorry. Uh, if you put down a color with hard edges, how do you blend it or soften the edge or blend it into another color? That is a great question. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do it. One, you can get a soft brush and go right over it. Uh, that's kind of what I've done. I picked a, I've gone to my airbrushing section and I picked soft blend and I'm just kind of going over it. So for example, hard edge, just soften it out. Bam. You know, so that's one way to do it. Um, another way is you also have the smudge tool 
at the top, which is the little finger icon, which is, has access to the same brushes that you would have in your brush panel, but it just literally smudges things. Um, and uh, as far as color, I would say um, the, so the best method I think of, and maybe DD can agree or disagree with me on this, but let's say I have um, a color like this blue here. Okay, that's too big. This blue and uh, say this kind of pink. Uh, sometimes what people will do is they'll kind of color pick and find the color in the middle and they'll create a third color entirely. And probably the worst brush I could have chosen for this example. But that starts to create a blend that um, tends to work for people. So, yeah. I don't know if Deepthi had any more input on that. Um, um, not at all. Everything okay. you said. <laughs> okay. I, I, don't want to, I don't want to steal, you know, steal all the. This is the Jordan show featuring a cry for help from me. So. I don't know. <laughs> What are you talking about? You're doing great. <laughs> Angie is saying, when I've done master copies, I have a goal in mind. Do I want to focus on brushwork, line work, values, or color? And I pick artists who are known for those particular things. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think that goes back to what we were talking about, like why it's okay for us to have like traced the composition a little bit, because that really wasn't something we were trying to focus on. Really, it was like painting and for me, like brushes and procreate. Um, I think that's a great way of working and some yeah it's great because sometimes like you said some artists are really good at one thing and not great at another and so you know if you pick an artist that's really great at one thing that you're trying to achieve um it it can be really useful oh my gosh sunday w george says you got this deep d i know that we're all struggling at different levels you're definitely not alone thank you so much Everyone is so nice to me. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. See? You're doing great. One day I'll be on a Procreate stream and I'll be like, Psh, easy peasy. That's this right. Is, this is easy. Well, if you remember last time um, we did that, uh, we did a painting stream. We both struggled. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just depends. <laughs> Blue Wolf Spear is asking, what did Jordan use to blur? Uh, I just used a soft brush just now. Um, so, you know, hard edge brushes will get you harder edge, obviously, you know, more crisp. Um, Deep D is using a lot of those right now and it works perfectly because she's doing mountains and stuff. Mine is a little softer. And so I need to kind of blend things in. And, you know, so those softer brushes are really helping me for that effect. Like I just had to get this um, kind of highlight at the bottom of this, uh, wall here raven shadow legend bang 99 years ago <laughs> i wish if procreate had the options to search for our brushes or to have a history in a current painting on what brushes did we use yeah that would actually come in handy i don't know of a software that does that um but you know, you can't organize your brushes however you want. And so what I tend to do is uh, if I use a brush more often, then I'll just say I'll select it and I'll just move it up to the top of the pile and switch the order. But uh, it helps me to just remember that. Oh, wow. I didn't know you could switch the order of your brushes. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. You can do that. You can duplicate brushes. You can change them. Like, there's all these brush settings that I honestly don't know how to do. But um, I just don't like messing with them personally uh but yeah there's every pretty much everything in procreate is customizable like almost everything <laughs> that's so cool it's such a good value honestly yeah especially for the price of this thing what 10 bucks i know yeah what yeah what see what i'm saying it's dope <laughs> I'm, I'm learning to love it I just realized I spent a lot of time neglecting this foreground, so I should probably get to it in a second. Okay, I think I'm kind of ready to start blurring things. There you go. Uh, that ba Vaporistique? Vaporistique? Sorry if I mispronounced that. For brushes, would you recommend to stick with a family of brushes, or it's fine to mix around family of brushes, i.e. only use 
sprayers or mixed sprayers and paint roller, charcoal, watercolor, et cetera. Um, I think it depends on what you're painting. Uh, if you're painting skin, maybe fewer brushes will probably be better for you. Um, like you don't want to paint like brick texture on skin unless you're paying someone who like has never used lotion in their entire life. Um, but if you are, if you're doing, you know, stone or mountain like Deepti's doing or food, you know, there's gonna, I change up my brushes depending on what I'm painting personally. Um, so, you know, some things just, some things will just work. Like I remember one time um, I was painting caramel because uh, I was doing chocolate and it had the caramel on the inside. And I used this like texture that was meant for, I think it was meant for gold or something like that. It was like a really weird texture and I used it and it was like perfect for this, uh, for the shine on the caramel. I was like, this is, this is beautiful. Yes. Perfect. So you just got to experiment, man. That's all you got to do. I love that. I love the idea of um, something random working. It happens all the time. <laughs> all the time. How do you feel like yours is going, Deepti? Doing all right? I'm doing okay. I'm, I am, I'm confused with like, I'm, I'm not confused. I'm just like, I'm kind of like improvising. I'm just like seeing where the procreate gods are taking me. <laughs> okay. Do you need help? You got, you have a I question? I don't think I need help. I think I'm about to start smudging. Maybe I'll need help in a sec, but I think right now I am okay. Unless you are like <laughs> looking at it and being like, "Do you need help?" <laughs> no, I'm not. Take I'm not help. Like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is this is your thing, and there's probably certain goals that you want with your painting. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm yeah. I'm kind of actually already a little bit happy with how things are looking. So cool, awesome. I love that. Rachel is saying, "If you find your procreate, I find your procreate streams fun to watch, and also keeps me motivated to keep tackling the program as well." Thank you so much, Rachel. We're glad. We're keeping you entertained and hopefully helping you learn something. Um, we're really happy to have you watching and keeping us company as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What even is artistic in the brush library? Like, why is that a category? Honestly, I don't know. Why they name certain things the way that they do? Um, oh, these are. Ooh. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm just like I'll just use the brush. I'll just paint it and uh, see how that goes. Is this thing is this thing frozen? Hold on, let me back out. Shyam is saying, "What is the right way to desaturate on Procreate?" Oh man, I have no idea, Jordan. Uh, uh, okay, so there's a couple ways uh, to desaturate a color. Uh, you can use, you know, you can just use the slider, but if you're trying to desaturate a whole image, uh, you can go up to the adjustments panel and then there's hue, saturation, brightness. You can tap on that and you hit a uh, layer. And unfortunately you guys can't see it, but on my screen, uh, there's a little slider at the bottom that says hue, saturation, and brightness. So if I were to, um, how would I do this? Let me duplicate this painting layer and try this. So if I were to do it for this top painting layer, do that again, all I would do is slide saturation down and now it's completely black and white. Um, and vice versa, you can make it super saturated and well, it actually looks really pretty. <laughs> I kind of like that. Whoa, I like that too. <laughs> it's really nice. That's not what I'm painting at all, but it looks really pretty. So yeah, that's how, that's how you would tackle that. I'm surprised at how good that was going to look. I thought it was going to be kind of bizarre. Looking. Happy mistakes. That's why we do master copies. Yeah. Have you ever done a master copy where like halfway through you were just like, oh man, like I don't want to do this anymore because I'm having so much fun messing with it. And then you like, basically you just kind of derail everything, but you still like make something you're like interested in. Wait, wait, what? 
what? I didn't understand the question. Like, like for example, if halfway through this, I was like, oh, like I kind of like how this is going, but I don't want to continue trying to like make it look like the original. So I'm just going to kind of like add my own twist to it. Um, I don't think I've actually done that before, but I have been in situations where doing a master copy has inspired me. Um, mm. That counts then. Then yeah, that's definitely. Yeah, that counts for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm using this smudge tool and it's like, I'm kind of happy with how things are looking. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, yours is looking great. Oh, thanks, Jordan. Yeah. You go, Dee Dee. Got this, girl. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I could cry. <laughs> <laughs> happy tears of art joy. <laughs> Let's see. Tara Crest says, what's a good rule of thumb to prevent yourself from overblending your paintings? Sometimes I feel as if I make them muddy. Um, well, if you have a tendency to make them that muddy, I would probably stop ahead of time. Like, I feel like there's always a point where you're like, should I take this risk and you know do this thing, and it always turns out to be a negative result. I think analyzing your own skill set and and where you are, and just saying where will what will this turn into if I try this, um, doing that I think can really really help. Um, but a lot of that will just come from practice and just really striving to get a clear vision, understanding of what your piece is doing. Yeah, something I'm realizing right now as I'm blending is that I think it's like easier to take baby steps when you're blending than like go too far. Um, or not easier, like it might be smarter at least when you're starting off because if you go too far, then you, it, it's harder to unblend than just blend a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So, something else I do is I also, if I feel like I'm taking a big risk, I'll make something on a new layer. And so if it really messes up, then I won't have a whole lot to worry about. Cause I'm like, Oh, I can just get rid of this layer. You know, uh -huh. I, it's an experiment. It didn't work out and no one has to know. <laughs> and I can keep my sanity that way. That's really smart. I should have like created a new layer to blend on or like duplicated it to blend. Maybe it's not too late. I'll just start doing that now. Sorry, talking to myself. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, I was thinking about this <laughs> a little bit. I know. Um, it's funny because we're on these like streams and then I like I get all zoned out and I was like, oh my God, I haven't said anything in a while. <laughs> Blue is saying, can't you create a bush, uh, well, bush pack, brush pack? Can, can't you create a brush pack? I don't know. Jordan, can you? Uh, yes, you can. I don't know how to do it personally. Um, I don't have an interest in making brushes and there are too many people who are really good at it already for me to feel like I need to master it. So I'll just buy the brushes that they use. Yeah, there's so many brushes out there. I guess like once you get really comfortable in your method, perhaps it makes sense, but like I'm definitely not someone who needs to be making her own brush packs. Yeah, just like, eh. I just don't have a, I just don't have a reason to do it personally. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, we'll leave that to Kyle Webster or whoever else to do it. I don't mind spending $10 on a brush set, <laughs> so. Um, Maria is saying, hey, Jordan, can you recommend using one brush for the master copy or use, or use a sum? Maybe, can uh, you recommend one brush? Um, man. that's a really complicated, that's like asking someone like what their favorite, you know, song is out of the millions and millions of choices there are. Um, I mean, I like some of the brushes that I've gotten from my, my own school or from like from friends, but I will say this, um, some brushes that are really cool. I got one, uh, brush pack. Let me see. I think it's portrait painting. I think this one was by Gabrielle something. Yeah, you know, I'm, I don't know if I can answer this question because I got brush packs from so many people I can't really remember their names. And I don't know if that's going to be helpful for me. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I failed you. I would say, like, I mean, I don't know as much as Jordan does, but I feel like what you said earlier about, like, the brush matters less than, like, how you use it kind of. 
like if you're working with just what procreate is giving you like i just use the top brush in painting round brush and on a, and it's really not the same texture as what the master copy original has but i think it's working kind of well for me and i'm learning how to use it so it might even be a good challenge just to like pick one and see how you can manipulate that texture to um, pick one that seems similar but you know i think don't feel like you are limited by your brush choices or that you have to work with like what the brush one of my favorite things to do when i'm working in traditional is to like pick a pick like a an object to use as my drawing tool and then use it in the worst way possible or like figure out all the wrong ways i can use it <laughs> wait what does that look like i mean i remember i took this class my freshman year where we had to create our own drawing tools but like basically to use a brush that has like a very specific like bristle kind or um like thickness and try like using a really thick brush but try and draw something really really tiny and detailed with it or like um use the back of the brush as like a as a drawing tool or mm. it kind of forces you to think in it innovatively and also it like taught me a lot about like i shouldn't make excuses not that that person was asking as many excuses but that like i tend to sometimes be like oh well i don't have the right tools and that's just an excuse. You can figure things out sometimes with, yeah. with limited. There, you know, that's actually a great point. You know, because there's actually a concept artist that I can think of. His name is uh, oh shoot, what is his, what is his name? His, his, his robot pencil. Um, something Jones. I can't remember his his full name, but robot pencil is his username, and mm -hmm. he basically just uses the, the uh, soft round brush and the hard round brush to work, and. You know, he's able to get all the jobs and he's doing fine. Uh, Estrella says, is there a way to label the brushes for future use? Um, like naming them, if that's what you mean. You can uh, tap on the brush and uh, I think it's was it about this brush. Let me see. Tap this. Well, I never go on my brush settings, so give me one second. I know there's a way to change the name. Uh, I think you might just rename the brush. Um, oh, here we go. So it's this one is called wet brush thingy. And you just tap on it at the top, and then a key bag will come up, and you just type in whatever name you want, if that was the question you're asking. So hopefully that was it. If not, then I taught you something different. Hopefully you can use that. <laughs> Jordan, I have to say, I'm like having a little fun right now. You're having a little fun? What? A lot of fun I'm having, which is Did unexpected. You? I really thought that I would be like my usual stressed self, which I am. With <laughs> but I'm having a hint of fun, That's which I'm awesome. excited about. That's so great. See, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. I hope people see how I've developed and feel inspired to also, because it really is not so bad. I mean, to me, it's like, once you get to the point where you're just placing the colors, or when you place the colors and they're all kind of blocked out, you've mm -hmm. done most of the work already. Now it's yeah. just like, in terms of thinking, you know, like what colors, do I use blah, blah. Now it's just a matter of filling the blanks in and getting it to look closer to the actual piece, which is a challenge in and of itself, like you know, naturally, but it's not quite the same challenge. John Murph is saying, I'm doing a separate work, but I'm listening to Jordan and Deep Deep chat it out. It's nice to hear others working as I do my own work. That's great. I, I feel the same way. It honestly feels like when you're working alone, it's sometimes nice to listen to other people working. It feels like you're a part of the conversation and you're like hanging with your friends, which is which is really nice. And our actually all of our streams, if you guys didn't know, our podcast, um, which you can listen to after the fact too. So if you're interested in that. I constantly have to have people talking while I work anyway. I, I never work in silence. Oh, really? I have to have music 
or, or yeah, some sort of a noise. I, I enjoy, I, I don't like working in silence. It gives me too much free reign over my thoughts and <laughs> that's never good. <laughs> existential crises while you're trying to paint. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll never be good enough. <laughs> Komodo Dragon is saying, already looking great. Keep up the awesome work, you two. Thank you so much. Honestly, you guys, I kind of really like mine. And I don't say this very often, but I'm like, let's just take a minute. <laughs> this is like Deep D's maybe like 10th time using Procreate. No clue what she's doing. You're doing See, I told you. I told you from the very beginning, an hour ago, that you're going to be just fine. And now look at you. You're like, a little pat on the back. Yep. High five from 3,000 miles away. <laughs> Cross country high fives. Right. Yeah. I'm feeling like, I'm just like, yes, let's keep on going. So in that case, since we probably won't finish it, what do you think? Do you think we should continue this for a part two and just like refine this more? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely, like, don't feel like I've gotten into the stage where I'm like, yes, I've created a master copy, you know, I'm, I'm still blending all the original palette colors. I was going to ask you, like, so after this, obviously, there are colors in here that aren't from the five that you've picked in the palette. Yeah. So are you now at a point where you're also, like, finding those other colors and putting those things in? Or, or what, what stage are you at? Because I actually haven't looked up and looked at yours in a while. Uh, yeah, so what I do for that stage, like, for example, these little uh, sort of pockets of um, kind of a cool orange, or, or not cool, a grayish orange color, I didn't have those in the original, so I'm popping those in, and I just work from big to small. So I got, I had those, matter of fact, let's do this, I mean, since we have the time-lapse video. Um, oh my god. Yeah. This is so cool, man. <laughs> so we started with these big blocks of color, right? And as time went on, all I did was just add little bits of new nuanced colors here and there uh, to make it more lively. You know, I add this kind of bluish color at the bottom, on the bottom right of the wall. Um, then I took it away right after, but, <laughs> you know, just trying to figure it out. So, you know, every, every once in a while, you'll want to add some new colors to give it some spice. Some spice. Yeah. Emma is saying, yeah, Deep D, it looks so good. Love that you're hyping yourself up. Thank you so much, Emma. I, I also think it looks good, and I'm happy with my progress, and I'm learning a lot thanks to my master, Jordan. Oh, that sounds weird. My, my procreate. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> we'll, we'll work out. <laughs> my procreate wizard teacher, Jordan. Anyways. <laughs> It's all good. You are very welcome. I'm glad that you're <laughs> happy with it. You're going to go and sleep with a smile on your face. Like, I did that. <laughs> yes, you did, Jordan. Maria is saying, Jordan sounds like the supportive swimming teacher on the shallow end of the pool telling the students that they were not going to drown. That is absolutely what is happening. I am absolutely flailing in the water. But now, you know, I think I know how to swim. I think I can take my floaties off. You know what's crazy? I actually... <laughs> the fact that you use a swimming example really cracks me up because it took me a long time to learn mm -hmm. how to swim. And I've almost drowned like three times in my life. Like, Wait, sorry, you don't know how to, is that what you just said? You don't know how to swim? I, I knew, I know how to swim now, but it took me a long time to get it. Oh. I almost drowned like three different times <laughs> because of poor decisions. Were you in a pool or the ocean? I was in a pool. So the first time uh, when I really realized I didn't know how to swim, um, I had this classmate who would hold pool party, host pool parties every year at the end of the school year. And she invited everyone in the class. Um, and there was this one kid who wanted to race me. And the way the pool was set up was, um, it was in three sections. So the middle section, she was super rich by the way. Uh, so it's like a fancy pool. And mm -hmm. in the middle section was a sh shallow end and the far ends were the deep ends that were like you know, 13, 14 feet. And so this kid's like, hey, Jordan, let's race. And I'm hopping the whole time. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's, let's race. And I, I hop along. And then at a certain point, the floor disappears. And I'm like, oh, okay. oh crap, what do I do? Now? And I, I was like eight, eight years old or something. And thankfully, my mom happened to be at that end of the pool. And she saw me and she grabbed me out. And she's like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> but, but it took, but I, did, I didn't know what to do. I was like, 
I was freaking out. So um that's so funny. The heart attack your mom probably had. <laughs> yeah, she's like, don't don't be trying <laughs> to uh, swim against all these other kids. You do not know how to swim yet. <laughs> It's funny until you're trying to figure out how to breathe. <laughs> I can laugh at it now, but yeah, it was, uh, I was not fun at the time. My gosh, I'm sorry. Swimming is like definitely something that's kind of like traumatic to people. Like I know I learned how to swim when I was really little, but I remember like having friends who weren't very good swimmers and like the, the like pressure you felt sometimes when you were like at a pool party and just, oh, yeah. I don't know. Not everyone knows how to swim, guys. That's kind of fine. I'm glad you do now. It is fun to go swimming. Yes, I do miss that. I do miss that. It was so cool when I could finally take the floaties off. <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> Jeremiah is saying, hey there, I'm, start I'm starting in all this world of art, and I want to know why artists would do this. Copy some illustration or poses. I actually don't understand why. So we explained this in earlier on the stream, but Jordan, do you want to, uh, since you know, you're the master of master copies? Uh. <laughs> uh, sure. Um, so let me, I'll start off by bringing it into a slightly different context. Um, a lot of the greatest singers and musicians that we know studied the greats, you know, like, for example, uh, Prince studied Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson studied James Brown and Fred Astaire and, you know, uh, Kendrick Lamar studies Tupac and Biggie Smalls and Jay-Z. And, you know, so every time you want to advance, it's always a good idea to look at the people who came before you. And so that's where studying and doing master copies comes in. We can look at someone, in my case, it'd be Emily uh, Tetri and Deepi's case, it's uh, Nathan Fouts, who are masters of what they do. And, um, and by analyzing and studying it, it helps us to figure out their thought process and what's going on. Um, it, that, that's really all is just simply learning how to do what the masters do. Yeah. And the key is that we're not creating this to like put in our portfolio and say that we had this original idea and la la la. It's, it's really for us personally to learn and then use what we learn in during this process in the future. Right. In our own work. Exactly. Exactly. So, that's why it's kind of low stress, you know? It's like, let's just figure out how, how close we can get in the time allotted to us. Oh my gosh. Clara is saying, I'm not a singer, but I can study Hugh Jackman saying, I don't know if it's the same thing. I don't know if you're actually studying him singing, Clara. <laughs> yeah, I, I put doubt on that too. Uh, I'm with I'm with Deepy on this one. <laughs> I think what we and most of the art prof community at this point know is that I don't know how much studying you're doing. If you're ah. not Hugh Jackman singing, <laughs> I think it's more drooling, Clara. Right. Just like the other day when we were doing uh, male torsos, and Clara's like, "I can't draw Hugh Jackman because I'm going to be so distracted." <laughs> And I will actually draw you, Jack. <laughs> the same thing. Oh, so funny. M Dreamland is saying, I'm so happy seeing you paint and listening to you talking. I learned so, so much from y'all and I yearn for people like you as my friends in real life. I hope to get them this year at art school. Oh my gosh, that's so oh. sweet. Thank you for saying that. We're so, I mean, you are our friend. <laughs> You're our family. We're our art pro family. Um, but please share your work with us and we'd be happy to talk, but I, ho I hope you do achieve that in art school, but we have a discord page that both Jordan and I are in, in our awesome community. The link to join is in the description below. You should join, you should hang out with us there. Talk to us here, talk to us on Instagram. Yeah. We do love I you guys. Who, Lisa H, what have you, Jordan and Deep Deep, learned today? This is very, Yoda-esque. Um, well, I have learned that I am more capable than I give myself credit for sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I've also learned that this brush that I thought I was going to hate, which is round brush, is actually quite also quite capable of things that I did not give it, think it would be. So perhaps I am like a round brush. 
Um, that n none of that made sense, <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I have learned. <laughs> Jordan, what have you learned today? What have I learned? Um, you know, honestly, a, a lot of things get ingrained in my mind as I explain it more. Like some of the some of the questions you guys have asked over the course of the stream are stuff that's in my head, but I don't really articulate. So finding a way to articulate some of these things has actually helped me to understand why is it that I really do master copies? Why is it that I study the color the way that I do? Um, and um, and also just to be curious, like I actually really, I, I feel bad that I couldn't help the person who's asking about specific brushes, but um, you know, being curious about those things I think is really key because that's what's gonna make you a better artist when you can figure out what it is that you're trying to knock out when you're trying to do it. Yeah. That's a really good question though. I think that sometimes when we're teaching on these Procreate streams, it's like a lot of like how we can help our community learn, but like we're learning just as much as you guys are from each other, from you guys. I mean, that's the awesome part of our prof. Yeah, we love it. We love it. Raven Shadow is saying, my dream is to join an art school. I think that's gonna help me with understanding art more. We actually have a lot of streams about the pros and cons of going to art school and being a self-taught artist. We actually have a stream specifically that's art school versus self-taught. And it goes into detail about like, yes, art school is wonderful, but there are a lot of really great ways of learning as well when you don't have access to that. And Art Prof is built on the idea that we want to be able to use what we learned in art school and in our community and bring it to people who don't necessarily have the means to go to art school or want to go to art school or aren't in an area. Um, so yeah, we hope that these streams are still helping you learn and I'm sure you're a wonderful artist and can still achieve everything you want. <laughs> Some person is asking if you were a sandwich, which would you be? Jordan, if you were a sandwich, which would you be? Sandwich. Uh, <laughs> a sandwich. That's a weird question. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, what kind of sandwich would I be? Uh, I mean, do veggie burgers count? <laughs> I mean, it's technically bread with stuff in the middle, and you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I literally have never thought of that question in all of my years. <laughs> so, I don't know what about you, dude. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Maybe like, um, like a caprese. How do you say that? Like mozzarella, basil, tomato, kind of like simple. I'm wearing a red sweater and a white t-shirt. <laughs> mozzarella, tomato. Oh, well, that works. Yeah, maybe right now it would be a caprese. I think, I think as, yeah. as every day there's a new. It's a new sandwich, new possibility for a new sandwich. Right. Oh my goodness, I think that was a mistake. I think the double tap where you can undo is one of my favorite things I've learned. <laughs> oh, it's so nice, but I have to be careful because I remember for a long time, I would run into this issue where I'd be drawing on paper and then I would just double tap and I was like, what the heck? Why isn't it going in? <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like that's happened on multiple occasions. Or I'll try and zoom in and I'll do like this. And I'm like, oh, that's right. It takes me a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's like those videos where like have you on TikTok people are asking like like ask kids like how do you like mime taking a photo? And they'll go like this, like as if they're taking it on their phone. And like our generation will go like this. And it's like, how do you pick up a fake phone? And it's like, we do this and they'll go like this, which I like blows my mind. That's so funny. I never thought about that. <laughs> Jeremiah is asking, what, uh, what do you do to be better in this type of art design or character design? I mean, I'm trying to think of poses or scenarios from imagination. Jordan, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, uh, for character design, study from life um, and understanding what makes uh, what makes things the way that they are. Um, for example, um, when studying anatomy, uh, I think one of the key things is actually studying how hormones affect the body. Like what happens 
if, um, you know, if someone has more testosterone versus more estrogen, or what happens if someone's an ectomorph or a mesomorph or an endomorph? Uh, look those words up if you don't know what they mean. They're different body types. Um, so studying those things um, and also having very clear ideas on story. You know, uh, I gave this example the other day to, uh, to a friend of mine. Um, there are certain stories that make sense and, uh, with their character designs, and then there are some that probably wouldn't. Like, for example, Harry Potter is a boy wizard. You would probably not dress him up in a cop's uniform and expect the same story to come out, right? Like, you know, can you imagine Harry with a baton and, you know, handcuffs? And it's like, it's, <laughs> no. it's not about a boy. It's not about Harry Potter anymore. It's someone completely different. So, yeah, study anatomy, understand all those things, and then storytelling. Like, if they're a chef, let him be a chef. If they're a cop, let him be a cop. Boy wizard, you catch my drift. I think that's great advice. Good. I'm glad. It, I'm glad it was helpful because every time, sometimes I give advice and I'm like, I hope that makes sense because uh, it makes sense to me. But I don't know. Everyone thinks differently. So <laughs> Jade is saying, "Thank you guys for everything you do. I learned something new in each video that comes out, and I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for saying that. It really helps us know that people are learning and." Um, that our videos are making a difference. So thank you, thank you. We really honestly have a lot of fun doing this and just like, I like hanging out with Jordan. So thank you. Uh, Elena is saying, hi there. I have been watching streams and I learned a lot about art from Art Prof for a while now. Jordan and Deep D are so nice and funny. I wish that we can meet one day. We wish that we can meet you one day. We're working on it. If one day we have the budget to do like an Art Prof meetup or something, we would love that. Fun fact, Jordan and I have actually never met in person. We I probably know. crossed paths because we were in school at the same time, but um, we've never actually like hung out in person. So that would be amazing to do too. But in the meantime, hang out with us during our live streams and comment and say, hey, come into our Discord. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of ways to hang out with us that aren't exactly in person just yet. Yeah. But we are working on it. We would love to. Yes, we love you all. An art prof draw drawing convention. That'd be so fun. I would love that. That would be the coolest thing. Right? How fun. That would be so fun. And to just like meet everyone that we've been like online friends with for so long. Right. I, just, I would honestly would like to just meet our TA, <laughs> all the TAs. Oh, I know, like each other. <laughs> <laughs> so I've only met. Kat and Casey in person. So. Yeah, I've met Lauren, Casey, Alex, and I have not met you or Kat. So wild. But you know, I'm like, I bet one day there'll be like a photo somewhere of like you, me, and Kat on a on campus together, like but like separate, you know. And be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we were all, or we like all were like at a lecture together, and we had no idea. <laughs> It'd be like a Back to the Future or something like that. Yeah. Across the past, but yet so far. Yeah, little did we know. <laughs> we would all be coworkers and the best of friends one day. Yes. Yes. This is so, I like, okay, I hate color and I hate like doing a lot of things that aren't exactly what I just do but this is like really like honestly I think that I would continue to work like this in the future like or like do these master copies like I feel like I'm learning so much it's really low stress and I'm having a good time Melissa is at saying you guys rock thank you you rock question what advice do you have for making your work look polished professional versus let's say a hobbyist I sense it when it's there, but I'm not able to pinpoint why. This is a kind of complicated question. Jordan, do you want to try tackling it? <laughs> give me the give me the complex one. All right, let's see what we can do. Um, I think I think a lot of it comes down to being honest with yourself. Um, if you let's say you're in a situation where you want to work in a specific field or industry, and if you look at your work and look at the professionals work and say, and, and you look at it and you say, okay, mine is clearly falling apart. What is it about it? Then you have to learn and analyze those things. That's what I had to do when I was studying character design 
is I would look at my favorite designers like Phil Barassa and Sean Galloway and Sean Thomas, and I would say, you know what, their anatomy is more on point. Their shape language is more on point. They have a more defined style. Um, they're, you know, they're pushing their colors more, wherever the case may be, um, and really analyzing that. Uh, as far as knowing the difference between a hobbyist and, uh, you know, professional, when someone's paying you for it, I think you could start putting yourself in the professional category, like, because there's such a thing as imposter syndrome, and even though I'm working at a, a larger company right now, I still feel like a student in some ways. So I don't know if that feeling will ever go away. <laughs> Yeah, and I think just, you know, making sure that you're focusing on everything, color, texture, composition, um, feeling like you are accomplishing everything that you should be when you're creating a work. I think that's kind of what sets other people apart is paying attention to all of these different things and um, creating work that's really thought through and is technically and conceptually interesting is when I see work like that, I feel like it's really like professional and um impactful i suppose so guys we would love for you to join us in the art prof discord in the hashtag art alongs uh channel we'll be over there jordan and i and we'll be hanging out and showing you what we created and we'd love to see what you created and having a little chit chat party after this the discord invite link is in the youtube description below please subscribe to the art prof youtube channel and we just wanted to give a huge shout out to our top Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for donating and being a Patreon supporter. We really could not be doing any of this without you. And we have a second page now of Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, guys. It makes us so excited that we do. Um, Jordan, thank you so much for expanding my mind and teaching me so much. I feel so elated and happy to have done this stream. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We hope to see you on the Discord to keep chatting. This was lovely. Have a great night, everyone, or morning, wherever you are. <laughs> Bye.